We are back. Okay, it seems like you guys enjoyed the first one. I enjoyed the first one. Um, so I called Avi again today. It is an absolute gorgeous day in uh, Santa Monica. The sun's out. I said, uh, Avi, can I review something today? And he said he's got the perfect thing for it. Uh, he says it's perfect for today. And he said uh, this car, this configuration will never exist again. So let's take a look. Okay, and here it is, an Audi S4. I love these, by the way. I, I love the A4s, I love the, the S4s. <clears throat> so this one is a 2006 Audi S4 Cabriolet. But what Avi told me was, this is not just any S4, it's a pretty rare one. And uh, when we go inside, I'll tell you, uh, I'll explain to you why. So this one is, I believe, the fifth, I'm sorry, the sixth generation uh, of the uh, uh, S4. This is the, um, it's called the B6, okay? So let's go through the, uh, let's go through the body and see, uh, see what we think. So the thing about these S4s are, and, and, and the S models from the Audi, is they're very understated, whereas BMW and Mercedes, their M and their AMG models, you know, they, get, they put the uh, fared flenders, flared fenders they put all this like cosmetic work to see what it is but audi if you actually take an a4 just a regular a4 even the four cylinder a4 it's pretty much the same they, they look very similar there's not that many distinguishing uh, characteristics of it so one of the ways you know that this is an s4 is you got this right here you got that s4 you got this brushed aluminum but i think the s line uh the s line cars uh, also had them because in th this year in this body style I'm sorry this chassis they had they actually had three uh, different uh, powertrains they had a two liter four cylinder which had about 200 horsepower then they had a 3.2 liter v6 that had about 252 um, horsepower and then the v8s the big v8s get a 4.2 liter uh, v8 and we'll, we'll get into that um, later but I believe the s line models and the s4s get the brushed aluminum uh the mirror caps and this brushed aluminum uh window frame which i think looks uh gorgeous in these cars um <clears throat> see as you can see there's no like body kit to dif differentiate this from a regular a4 it just looks very un un understated very elegant <clears throat> let's go to the back here and again we have the s4 there we have the dual exhaust but the thing is even the four cylinders have this dual exhaust so if you took all the badging out no one would ever know uh what this car actually is if it's an s model or not and usually the characteristics of an of an s model is that you get a bigger you get a bigger engine uh you get a better a bigger engine beefier suspension beefier brakes you get some uh decals here and there inside it'll say s4 here and there <clears throat> but in my opinion the s4 never really stacked up well against the m3 and the uh, amg models like this i guess the clk 55 um cabriolet but i think this is the only generation that actually had a shot uh because it had a v8 and at the time those those other cars did not have uh, a v8 but any other time i think the s4 is far uh, fall a little short compared to an m3 uh they're just not as sharp they're just not as fast um and and, and i think a lot of people compare an s4 to the highest M3, I'm sorry, to the highest three series before it dips to, uh, into, uh, into, the, uh, into the M's. I also think these are aging well. You guys let me know, and we'll go do beauty shots later, but I think, I think the understatedness of it, uh, I think it's working for it, and I think it's gonna age well in time. And I think in general, Audis uh, age well. I, I don't think some of the Audis from the, the 80s and 90s uh, are going to age well, but I think these, when they started really, really producing really nice cars, um, I, th I think they started to look good. The back looks great, and I actually just realized I have a lot of experience with this generation. Um, I had an A4 uh, four-door, and um, and I remember uh, how much I love that car, and it, it basically looked just like this, but it didn't have the V8, and also uh, I had a girlfriend, and I helped her get a uh just like this but i got her the v6 so i spent a lot of time in these cars they're absolutely great cars they're absolutely solid trunk Ooh, that's clean okay so all these cabriolets 
have this thing. Let's try to figure this out. You, okay, there you go. All right, do you guys see this? So when the top is down, this is down, okay? But when the top is up, you can actually pull this, and you see that? And it opens up that space for you. It gives you a little bit more uh, space. Uh, here you got the, um, these are famous on all uh, most German cars, but uh, for your ski sack, so you put that in, you put your skis through it. And this, this is the, uh, the wind deflector. Uh, it's pretty amazing how much this car has all, like everything, uh, everything intact. Uh, let's see what's this. Just some compartment there. Yeah, that's that. All right, let's take a look at the engine. Oof. Look at that. Okay, so 4.2 liter V8. Now, here's the cool thing about this. This V8 comes from the A8. They took the A8 V8 and they put it into this. Like, how cool is that? And as you can see here, it is shoehorned in here. There is no more room for anything else. Look at this. Look, you'll see. Okay. So, like I said, it's a 4.2 liter V8. Um, and, and interesting about these Audis back then, I, I'm not sure if they still do now, but they actually have five valves per cylinder, three for intake, two for exhaust. So, if you take uh, five times eight, I think that's 40. So, this is a so 4.2 liter, 40 valve uh, V8. It produces 340 horsepower, which is not huge, but it was great back then. And, and the funny thing is now, 300 horsepower you get from your four cylinder. Your two liter four cylinder should easily be able to uh, produce 300, uh, 300 horsepower. So 340 horsepower, uh, 300 pound uh, feet of torque. And the zero to 60 on this, um, as I was reading, it's somewhere between five and a half, six seconds. Again, nothing huge, nothing spectacular, but <clears throat> but it's, it's a respectable number for 2000, uh, 2006. And again, no one was putting these V8s in their smaller or smallest uh, smallest cars and uh, I can't wait to drive this one okay let's go check out the uh, the interior now All right, here we go first things first so it's got all the power stuff the lumbar oof that's all the way that's all that it goes okay uh, first things first I believe these seats are Recaro uh, Avi will know but I am sure these are Recaro seats that came factory um, with the S4 and uh, here's some uh, some basic stuff. The mirrors. Oh, you could see look at that. You can put the mirrors in. Uh, the memory. What I love is you actually get four. Sometimes you get two. Sometimes you get three. But Audi's like, let's do four. So you got four people. So uh, what? What do you think? The owner, the husband or wife, the spouse, the kid, the nanny maybe. Uh, you guys, leave a comment below. Who would you assign to one, two, three, four? Okay, there's that, and there's these buttons, uh, the trunk, and this one. Uh, I'm not sure what this is, but apparently if you hit this, you have some sort of hydraulics and it lifts and it, and it bounces up and down. All right, now let's get in. Okay, first impressions, it's, it's, a, it's a little snug for me. I'm um, 6'4", but I, I, I'm in, I can, I can fit in there. Um, so here's the thing about Audi interiors, okay? I know this doesn't look anything spectacular because it's from 2006, but at the time, Audi was dominating in interiors, like dominating. No one could, uh, no one can compete with them. Uh, and it's hard to kind of grasp this, but you, you have to go look at cars from 2006. But you can see it's, it's, very, it's very Germanic, right? It's just, this is like a pure German, uh, a pure German car, right? No, no frills, no fuss, like everything you need. Uh, let's go through some of the stuff here. What's this? Oh, there you go. Uh, I, by the way, I don't think any modern cell phone or anything would ever fit in here, but that's a cool, cool little thing. Uh, ESP, this was the uh, stability control. This, you put, to, ooh, keeping those. Uh, you put your coin in there. By the way, do you guys agree a lot of cars are missing this, this these days? There's no place to put your coins and other kind of stuff. And what's this one? Okay, so... <laughs> I don't know why, but you get you get two places to put 
your uh, credit cards, parking tickets, change, whatever. Why do you guys think there's two of them? And I think they're different sizes, right? No, are they, I think they're the same size. Uh, you guys, leave a comment below. Also, why do you think there's two? Why did they put two of them? And what would you put in here? All right, so that's that. Okay. Um, we got the um, we got a old school CD. We got, uh, let's see, satellite tape. Uh, we got air conditioning. Got the heated. We got the heated seats. All the defrost stuff. Um, got this really nice brushed aluminum here. And this, this is what I want to show you guys. Look at this. A six, is it five or six? It is six. A six speed manual. Just so we're clear, this is a V8 all wheel drive six speed manual. I don't think this is going to exist. And the, and the reason I'm telling you this, because this is a, it's a four passenger cabriolet with a six speed manual uh, quattro all wheel drive and a V8. I, I don't think this configuration will ever come about again with turbos and automatics and all this kind of stuff. So I think, I think you're witnessing history here. I think you're witnessing something that we're not going to be able to uh, get our hands on. Um, so uh, let's take a look at the steering wheel. Nice thick steering wheel. Got the S4. Uh, got the S4 badging here. By the way, you can see this interior is held up very well. I can't do the math how old it is, but it's a, it's a 2006. If you add 10 years, 2016, ah, about 15 years old, I think, something like that. But uh, this is actually really good for that old, uh, that old of a car. Um, let's, uh, let's start her up. Oh, actually, let's take a look at the dash here. Okay, and here's the, here are the keys. This is your standard late 90s, early 2000 key for any luxury like vehicle. They had this key, but also this is from the Volkswagen group. As you all know, Volkswagen owns Audi. So it's gonna be your standard uh, key. Another cool thing about Avi's cars is that look, you get two keys. Actually, you get three or four keys. You rarely, rarely get that. So that's another cool thing about this car that it comes with both keys. All right, let's just take a look at the dash. There we go. All right, so it's got it's got ninety seven it's got ninety seven thousand miles, and we'll ask Avi. We'll get his take on what he thinks of the um, what he thinks of the the miles. But really straightforward, no fuss, no frills, kind of dash with the the center old school uh, graphic there. Um, I think we're ready for a drive, so let's go. Can, can, since I'm only one guy here doing this, can you please put the top down so I can show how the top goes down? Okay. By the way, I love, I love like complex roof. Avi, here's the problem. Hold on, hold on. Stay in the seat. Stay in the seat. Here's the problem. Oh! Okay. Tell me. <laughs> you just messed up your ankle. I just messed up mine. Uh, okay. Here's the thing, Avi. Uh, that shot we just did of you taking off, it was with the roof up. The continuity won't match now. I need you to do that again with so the roof what's down. The, what's the difference? You're going to see me now with you know, my hair? <laughs> exactly. That's what we want to see. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Avi. Uh, I'm going to go for a ride and we'll come back and get your take on this, okay? okay. Thank you. Let's see. Yo! All right. Now here's the thing, I know a couple of you guys mentioned that you want me to get a GoPro so you can see me driving, but the thing is, that's what everyone else does, like everyone has a GoPro looking. I want to give you guys a perspective of, of if you're sitting next to me, what it's like to actually experience this stuff, what it's like to adjust the mirrors, like want to do all that kind of stuff. All right, so let me put my seatbelt on. Okay. 
Uh, how do you drive manual? No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, let's go here. And also, the wind is going to be horrific, so uh, it's not going to be the best audio. And I got to film. I got one hand, and I got to do the, the, the thing. So most likely, we'll just stay in first gear. Okay, here we go. All right, let's go to our usual spot and we'll do some beauty shots. Okay, here we go. Ooh, the clutch feels great. And you actually can feel, you can actually feel how much torque and power is available to you. It's weird, it's hard, it's hard to explain through the clutch. Okay, let's just give her one good rip. Whoa, whoa, whoa. First of all, can you guys hear that? That sounds really, really good. And this shifter is like butter, like butter. Okay. There we go. All right, here we go. Oh, I love that like purr it makes, like purr. I don't know if you guys can hear it. By the way, this is second gear at a thousand RPM, right? And I'm just gonna floor it. It's got the grunt, it's like, ah! Okay, I don't think this is where we're supposed to go. Uh, let's go here. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna keep it in second gear, right? Everything you need is here. Let's see it from a standstill. If I go from second gear. Yeah, there you go. You actually don't, you, all you need is second gear around town. Okay, I found the spot that I like. Uh, let's open up, let's open her up a little bit. Gorgeous day, by the way, gorgeous day. All right, here we go. So we're in, actually we're in second gear. Actually, you know what? Let's see in second gear. Oof, that rumble. Very nice. This is, uh, it's, the, 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 the engine's very elastic. Like it never lacks any power. Power's there from whenever you need it. Look. Oh man, this is great. Yeah, again, I, I don't think this, I don't think this is gonna beat any M3s. I don't think, but it's a, a really comfortable, really relaxing way to carry four people and have a V8 with a manual. Oh, what a joy. Okay, let's go back and do some beauty shots. So we're here at the beach. Um, I, I learned a couple things from the last beauty shots. Someone told me that the sun needs to be behind me as I shoot, so I'm gonna attempt to do some better beauty shots. And of course it's overcast now so the second I get here. Also another thought I had, let me know, let me know what you guys think. I, I know there's a bunch of talented photographers and videographers in LA. Um, if any of you were interested, maybe when I do one of these, you guys can come down here, you guys do the beauty shot portion of the, of the video. I'll show the video, uh, I'll give you the credits and all that kind of stuff. If you guys are interested, please uh, leave a, um, a comment below or just DM me, I would love to do that. Okay, so let's start on the beauty shots for this one.
Okay, we're back from the drive. Um, I just want to make some observations uh, here. Do you guys know what these are? So when the car is about to roll over, two things. I don't know what they look like, but like I guess like a little rod or something like that. These pop up real quick, uh, so you don't die in a uh, rollover accident. Also, the other thing I'm sure you guys know, but this is an all-wheel drive car. Uh, all four wheels get power, so I mean you can't use any of that stuff in this dry weather right here. But I think that's cool to have a V8 six-speed manual with all-wheel drive. Um, also, another thing in the back. Remember I showed you guys the ski pass-through. Look, so you come here, you open this up, you got the first aid kit here, and that's where the pass-through comes. Um, okay, let's get Avi's uh, let's get Avi's impressions on this car and what he thinks and why he bought this car. Okay, Avi, don't worry about the mic. It looks good. It's, it's gone through your thing. Look here, it's all here. Okay, Avi, <laughs> this is gonna be weird. Okay, uh, this is a great car. Okay, this is what I want to know. Why did you pick this car? Like, what did you see in this car that you bought the car? And what do you think overall of these car? And also, this is 97,000 miles, right? So what is your take on the reliability and what you think? And why did you get a car that has 97,000 miles? See, you have to take everything to a factor. See, if you run the Carfax, has two owners, was decently maintained. But that's not just the important part. The car is the original paint on it. The only thing we're, that we're about to lose the original. No, paint. no, you're not. <laughs> okay. um, this is the this is the original. This paint. is the original paint on every panel. Wow. And the only thing that is gone, and it's it's just that side rail. Yeah. Okay. And you see that? Yeah. And we're gonna do. Sense. Yeah, okay. of course. Okay. But uh, they're they're good cars. Look, the the manual was a reliable. It's again, it's not like five owners. You don't know who was the previous owner. Two owners, you kind of get an idea, you know, the car is, is old. Um, Do you know how long between each owner? You want me to tell you? Yeah. Actually, can we look at this too? Can, can we see what you're saying? Oh yeah, you guys, this is so cool. So all he's got to do is open up the Carfax app, okay? Yeah, because uh, we're paying them so much money. And he just scans. No, it's really, it's right here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. He scans the VIN. It's quick, huh? Yeah, that was amazing. Wait, is this only for dealers or, or consumers can have this too? It's not worth it. <laughs> okay, okay, we're, okay. We're, we're roughly, I think, dealers right now uh, paying about 800 bucks a month. Get the... What? Okay, can I send you some Carfax? You no, know, no, no. I tell you the story. Remember when Carfax came out, it was unlimited, 20 bucks a month. Yeah. You know, like everybody could have run it. Every, all the dealers, I don't care who you are, every dealer probably maxed out their cousins, friends, credit cards just to get the Carfax. And I think they caught up to it and uh, suddenly the TV ad started. And they, instead of, you know, they're like, ask your dealer for the Carfax. You know, you know be a Carfax certified <laughs> dealer. Right, right. So easy by easy, the consumer aspect of it is... If somebody runs a Carfax, he runs it on his car, um, probably owned it for 10 years, he wants to sell it, he doesn't care about 30 bucks. <laughs> all right. But for us dealers, where we, in every car we touch, we run Carfax or auto check. Oh, that's check. right, because before you buy a car, you, you want to see what the Carfax is. Yeah, right? exactly. Okay. So sometimes Carfax could be clean and auto check is not. Okay. There's two different companies out there. Um, is auto check more professional, like dealer? Uh, uh, auto check is. Um, how do I say it? It stands in court. Okay, great. You like okay. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Carfax, it's complete BS. <laughs> okay. okay, it tells you only certain things you want to know. Okay. But the, I, I know cars that it says damage reported, and you look at the car, and it's just a bumper. Got it. it and you know, and it just could, kills the car. Got it. it could have been a minor thing that, because there's no description of it, it, it could be perceived as a big, a correct. big thing. Correct, okay. correct. And, um, so yeah. What was the, so what was the Carfax? Yeah. Sorry for my hands there. So it's two previous owners. It's a 06. It's a S4 cab. See, the first owner had it until 12, like one year basically. Okay. Right? And the second owner had it since basically 2008 to now. That's good. And you look at it, it was serviced DCH Audi, DCH, DCH, DCH. Look at this. Yeah. It's fantastic. Dealer, dealer, dealer. Like, look how many times. Now, when I got the car, the car is in great shape. It needs a few things, like obviously the paint and a couple of other minor stuff, but the car was just 
tired. The top was tired. Oh, let's talk about the top because you keep mentioning the top to me. Uh, right. and, I'll, and I'll have shots of what we put it Well, down. the top was black. Okay. Um, and uh, I said, you know what? I'm going to make it red. <laughs> because I think it works great with the silver, black, yeah. and red. Yeah. It kind of breaks the colors. And why not? And this top came with lifetime warranty, so I was really into it. It's not the part. You can buy a top 500, six, 700 bucks. It's to put it in. Okay. You know, you're going to pay any, on a good day, any upholstery shop, 600 to to $1,000 to install. Uh, just, the, just the labor? Just the labor. Okay, so you're looking at about two, uh, 1500 to two grand. Like a professional place will not touch it less than two. Dealer, okay. forget about it. Okay, and how long should they last? Well, from the dealer, it all depends on the weather. Yeah where you are, how you treat the top. But you know, when it's a black top, the glue after a decade fails. Yeah, got it. And on this scenario, the glue failed and somebody Mickey Mouse it and put silicone around the edges. Got it, got it, got it. And that lasts also, but six months to a year, and then kaput, it opens again. It's just a bandaid, not a solution. Yeah, and all the modules are right here at the end. So if you leak water, oh my God, got it. why? Got it, got it. Okay, um, so you put a new top, you put a red top on this. Correct. You looked at the Carfax, the Carfax looked good. It only had, the, it only had but two you have orders. to understand as a dealer, we know when this car was repainted. Got there's it. ways to tell. Okay. Um, there's no paint work. Okay. That's it's, to it's you, a, that's to me, it's gold. Okay. No a paint. car that has been on the road for 13 years. I was trying to do the math. Is it 13? It's 13. Yeah. Uh, you sure? Yeah. Six, 16, seven. Oh, okay, something like that. Yeah, all right. 13 okay. years. Okay, 13 years. <laughs> And uh, okay, it's not that so, bad. So original, original paint. Original paint, original all the interior. Service, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and then I come in, and you know these cars have issues, and the issues vary from engine, transmission mounts, failures, because um, they just don't hold the torque. Right. It's very torquey. Very. Um, rear timing. The timing covers leak. Okay. And to do the job is a nightmare yeah we, we saw that you can barely like put your hands oh it's in a nightmare to work on this car legit yeah if, if you have an issue it's like you want to change a hose you want to spread the whole front end Oof. you got to take bumpers off and, and i read somewhere the alternator has a has a Com oh cooling, my god yeah yeah thing, yeah right? yeah oh my god it has its own radiator it's something. built to fail <laughs> by the way when i read that the radiate that the alternator had its own radiator well bmw x5 came with that idea too okay uh, early generation and uh, I think they regretted it but they continued for a bit okay then they came with the electric water pump which yeah. was another failure for years yeah I don't know how they are right now right. Oh, also another old-school thing about this car it's got an old-school steering rack and pinion right correct no bullshit electric no, no, no. motors and all this it's basically a v8 all-wheel drive it, look around canyons this car would outhandle some other cars yeah and I don't care. You could have more horsepower. Just yeah. it's a, it's a comfortable ride, you know. Yeah. Yeah. What other what other impressions do you have of the car? What else, what else do you like about this about this car? And also, I need I need. To, it's convertible. Need... It's V8. It's a four full four seater. Not those. Look, you have the Lexus SC430, yeah. which is one of the best cars you could ever buy. Yeah. But the back seats is for, you know, like Pomeranians. <laughs> yeah. Nobody can. Nobody can sit in the back at all, but yeah, yeah. on this car, you can actually go for a trip yeah. and be okay for a couple of days, yeah. you know? By the way, Avi, you know this car in 2006 had a $1,700 gas guzzler tax that you had to pay. Of course. Back in the day, you, had, you actually had to pay money if your car didn't hit a certain uh, fuel economy. You could drive this day. car and get eight miles a gallon. <laughs> eight miles a gallon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight miles a gallon. This is incredible. All right, Avi, anything else you want to let us know about this uh, about this car? And also one more thing, I need you to confirm something so I can have my clickbait, okay? Okay. You could agree, actually, if you don't agree, don't agree with me, but the title is gonna be that this configuration will never exist anymore, which is- Nothing exists anymore, wh it changed which, everything. Which is a naturally aspirated V8 in a four seat convertible with a manual and all-wheel drive i don't think anyone's going to ever have that configuration ever again i doubt it okay so you, you agree i doubt it all right clickbait's done all right avi I doubt it. thank you again You're welcome. and can i come back tomorrow good to see you god bless you <laughs> drive slowly <laughs>